Celine Show. Today's episode will be very down to earth as I welcome television personality, glamour, fitness, model, actress, fashion designer, and internet sensation, Nicole Austin, better known as Coco! Hey! Yes. hey. I'm here live yeah. in the party room in the, the Coco shoe cave. <laughs> the background, it's just incredible. How many shoes do you have there? Just well, I stopped counting a long time ago. I stopped counting at 800. So I think I'm over a thousand now. But if you, if I just pan over real fast, there's one on this side, keeps on going. and then on this side, it just keeps on going and going and going. And on the other side of the room, I've got all my winter boots and all that stuff. It's very funny. But um, <laughs> I don't have any more room when I get shoes now. So my thing is I actually give a pair of shoes away to my fans. I see. When I get a new pair of shoes. Wow. And I do shoe giveaways on my blog. So it's pretty fun. It's like interactive for uh, both well, of them. I don't know if you ever allow people in your closets because I understand people might be, you know, very proud, but just in case, if you want one time, I would love to come and see your closet because I I don't know if you know that I'm kind of a fashion type of, you know. Yes, of so course. I'm like, that is, speaks my heart. <laughs> yeah, oh, then you, that's the reason why I wanted to see you into this closet because you would really get a kick out of this. You know, um, Italian. It's so, so colorful. <laughs> appreciate shoes. So, like I was saying, as a California native, she has earned her name to fame for her countless set of talents, curvy figure, along with her marriage to legendary rapper Ice-T. Coco has branded herself as today's sexy modern woman who still prioritized being a wife and now a wonderful mom, continuing to grow, teaching women of all ages how to be fit, sexy, and confident while living with all fashion marriage values. That is very nice of you. Today, I'll sit down with Coco to discuss the reality of being known in Hollywood for your figure, the pressures of a marriage in the spotlight, and how being a mother affects your motivations, relationships, and career goals. So again, please welcome my girl, Coco. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. What's up? Yes, thank you for having me me here. It's always an honor when people think oh, about it. <laughs> so to start, you uh, began your career as a lingerie uh, model uh, at a very young age um, of 18. So I want to know, how did you push past simply being, you know, maybe objectified to understanding your own power, right? And uh, creating a serious path for yourself? Well, you know, for me, I started very young. So of course, you don't really know yourself yeah. Pretty much until you get into your 30s, yeah. to tell you the truth. So everything is kind of like you're like wish washing in the beginning. You're trying to think, figure things out. I just know I was growing up in California where, and you, you have to understand 20 years ago, you have to mindset yourself into yes. what California is or was. What? You know, um, they have tall, slender, <laughs> bobacious blondes, yes. like the bigger boobs, the better. Mm -hmm. They didn't really care about a booty. Mm -hmm. You know, that's more of a trend now. They didn't care about the booty back then. And um, so like when I'm growing up in that zone, I want to be them. Yeah, I want to be those California girls, even though I am the California girl, I was kind of like out of the loop a little bit because in my eyes, being a model in California is you had to be really tall, slender, big boobs. And like, you know, I'm talking slender where you put your, th your th girls will know what I'm talking about. Guys won't, but <laughs> you put your legs together yes. and you see through your thighs like there's a gap between your thighs yeah. that slender. Of course. I always wanted that. <laughs> and I never had it. I felt like I was fat because I never had the gap in my thighs. I see. So, but all the other girls had it around me. So I was like, all right, so I'm going to try to lose weight. I, I went to the bul uh, bulimia issue oh. when I was 18. I just, I was always if you look back at pictures, I was always skinny. I was never like super thick, but I was always fit. Yeah. But I wanted to be really, really skinny because that was the trend. Yeah. So I had to get out of that mind state for so long. But um, it took from 18 to like 27. And let me mind everybody who I was or 
who my husband is my, I met my husband at 22. Oh, so wow. I was already modeling way before I met him. Mm-hmm. You know, I had boobs and everything, you know, <laughs> All I right. see people are like, Oh yeah, she got with iced tea and she got boobs. I'm like, um, did you? I had them already. <laughs> I was like, uh, no. Um, but so then I, I'm trying to go to the timeline here. So I was fitness modeling, lingerie modeling. I was a body model. People don't understand what body models are. They use parts of your body yes. to model. That was in back in the day. And Absolutely. since I, I'm only five two, so I. I'm not even like tall enough to runway my model. I'm only five, two. I'm kind of like just a little bit thicker, not too thick, but just a little bit thicker than the norm and always had a bubble booty is what they would call it back then. Yes. And, um, I just wanted to fit in. And the only way I thought doing that was to become this California girl. Now I became, that went into playboy. So oh, I, see. I worked for playboy, um, and did all the parties and events. And then after that is when I met ice at 22, mm-hmm. I still didn't like who I was. Oh. I modeled, but I still did not. I didn't take my uniqueness and really apply it. Yes. If, if you understand what that means, like, yes, I had a uniqueness part about my body, but I didn't like it. I I'd always cover it up. It was so also it somebody happen. from outside coming in and telling you how you should do, or it's something that you just had uh, in your head. No, see, I lived, I, my, my parents, they, let me um, tell you about my parents. My parents actually came in and they were a part of the entertainment business oh, too. All life. So both my parents met on the set of Bonanza when they were very young, they were mm-hmm. 14. So they were, they were both child actors, grew up in that little uh, zone for a while. And um, so for me being in the limelight a little bit, didn't, didn't affect them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So it, for me being showing off my body, I've always showed my body off. Even as a teenager, I was always showing it off. I was yeah. always performing, you know, so it didn't really catch my parents off guard, I- but they didn't push me to do it. They just let me do it on my own. Mm -hmm. So I figured it out along the way. And it wasn't until I met ice. That's who helped me reposition my thoughts in my brain about modeling. I understand. And it was weird because he's like, you know what? You have something there. You're not using it, but you have something unique. And I was like, I do. I do. <laughs> so he loved it. So he kind of exploited it a little bit. He like exploited my, um, my booty, my body. And he just loved the fact that I was like a white girl, you know, <laughs> that had a little thickness. And he liked that. It was, that was some, that was a turn on to him. I see. I was so, just wondering because for instance, something that I started modeling as I was 16 and I remember my very first uh, teacher, I actually shared this um, prior teacher, you know, really catwalk, a little looked at me and said, you know, you're pretty, you know, you're tall and everything. Just remember, if you want to do this as, you know, your job, you basically have to forget about kind of eating. And that's why, you know, you were mentioning about bulimia. That's why I was asking, you know, someone maybe pushed you because especially, you know, back then, like you were saying, there was like a big, you know, kind of pushing you know, how the body had to be. I'm sure right. today's still very tough, you know, for models. People have have no clue how hard it is the regimen that you have to write everything no. but but and and sometimes you know unfortunately you can also get into anorexia or bulimia you know those right. are serious problems for instance for me right. I had, my father's a medical doctor he helped me out I said no there's no way you're gonna go there that's why um, your I, father that helped you absolutely and my mom as well she's a psychotherapist so they both said you know this guy is crazy you know but when you're 16 18 you know and they give you those models in your mind you know you can very easily be, you know, the track right. to that. There was no, there was no thick model back then. Yes. To there was no, I mean, the the ones that I grew up were J Lo. Yes. J Lo, you know, there wasn't like any anybody to look up to yes. when I was born. Now it's a thing. I feel like I broke that a little bit. I helped break it. I, I wasn't the person, but I helped break the beaten path of what it was back then Mm -hmm. you know you look at tiktok and instagram and all these like little girls that are like 20 years old yes well that all came from somewhere you know like that i tried i was doing that (laughs) yes 
back in the day, but it was really hard to break through because people just rolled their eyes at me. Absolutely. You know? Two, uh, what types of um, maybe challenges um, came with, you know, like you were saying, owning your own body in Hollywood. So did your, like we were talking before about your family, so did they support you through this? And maybe what advice did they give you? And what advice would you give to maybe, you know, young girls that are actually struggling, you know, through this and are still kind of living what you went through? Well, first of all, I feel like the trend kind of left out 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's still there, but it, I, I was just watching the, the movie Physical, if you guys get a chance to watch it, like I think it was on Netflix. Oh, and and a big part of it was bulimia back in the 80s, right? Exactly. And it made me laugh. And I'm like, wow, that was such a huge thing back then. I don't see it too much now. Even my friends that are models, they're not into it. Mm -hmm. So I think, it's, I think it's past. But if people are still into that type of stuff, I feel like they need to see their uniqueness apart. Everybody's born with something unique yes. to their body. Whatever that is, cool looking elbows. I don't know. A nice neck. I don't know. Work with what you have. Take that unique part of your body and work with it. I didn't think I had it until my husband told me I had it. My parents, not so much. My parents just kind of like, you know, didn't really know what I was going through. Mm -hmm. I kept it hush hush. No one kind of knew what I was doing. Um, it was all in my head and my brain. Um, so as far as my parents guiding me, I they didn't know anything about it. So... And, and they've always been supportive, no matter what I've done with my life, whether it was Playboy or fitness modeling or whatever, they, um, they accepted me who, for who I was when I was little. <laughs> they never told nice. me that. And I understand, you know, it's not for everybody, of course, to be accepted in everything you do. But like you were saying, the good thing, in my opinion, about social media, so social media has a lot of bad things. But the good thing that uh, is given us is the possibility to see so much out there and understand that everyone, like you were saying, has their own uniqueness. And so I've seen also that trend, you know, change. So again, it did happen to me. And hopefully maybe nowadays they are pushing more and being you, be, right. maybe you, right? So bring that uniqueness that it kind of right. became a trend now. So it's like, let's right. use that trend because I don't want any girl, you know, to go through what maybe you went through or I went through to kind of being pushed to be, you know, someone else or, you know, to kind of be right. pushed, you know, in a certain um, position that actually then be, can become, you know, a mental disease or a, a body disease. So um, that is, yeah. I would say, the, the, the positivity of, you know, what the world of modeling has become, in my in my opinion. So I also wanted to know, what point in your career did you, uh, I mean, uh, we were talking about, you know, before, did you meet Ice-T? So it was like when you were, you know, you were saying around 22. So uh, um, how was it? I mean, how did you handle the relationship, you know? Uh, because of course, then you became a public, uh, you know, couple. So how was that for you? Well, I mean, again, this is pre-social media. Okay, okay, when we met, we didn't have Instagram, yeah. Twitter. We there wasn't even MySpace. Wow. MySpace. Yeah, this is this is like you have to think like 2000, right? We're 2021. You have to think 2000 and F, all the social media boomed in, you know, in the middle of 2000. Correct. So, we it was easy. I feel like it was easy. The only people that can write us up are the magazines and that was huge. <laughs> magazines aren't even huge now. Yeah. But were paparazzi in the magazines. That's only how you can hear, you know, hate or whatever crap about yourself <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You would you would just find it in the magazine or you would see like on Entertainment Tonight or whatever on those on those shows. But it wasn't really that bad. I see. I do remember though that I was so young and Ice is 20 years older than me. I see. And I was 22 and he was like 40 42, 42, 43. And, um, I remember them saying, Oh, like, who's this, uh, who's this, um, uh, this blonde chick, you know, that just came in the picture. She'll just be gone in two months. I was like, mm, okay, I'm about to prove them wrong. Oh, right? so I'm be in and out. All right. Okay. You can say what you want. And then 21 years later, 21 years later, I'm still in the picture. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> that must frustrate them. But it was hard because I grew up in the public eye, actually, because in 20s, you're still growing. You're still a kid. Absolutely. And I really grew up from 20 to now I'm 42. 
I grew up in the public eye. So you saw me develop from the fitness model to the calendar girl, to the DV model. So like, I, then I started branding myself and coming out with my own products, my own clothing line, yes, and all my own that. pleasure products. And then just people, I just stuck with the people that really liked me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got a lot of hate because I got boobs. I don't know what it is about the boobs. If I didn't have boobs, then I think people would like me a lot more. Or if I had dark hair, something about the combination of both the boobs and the, and the blonde hair, they just equate it to bimbo. <laughs> that's, that's all they do. But I, I always say to people, people don't pay for normal. They that's want the true. extreme, okay? They want this. They want the extravagance, all right? And that's who Coco is. As well, it's beautiful you know? to kind of give them a huge F you. I'm yes. you wrong. Yes. I'm not a stupid bimbo. Right? <laughs> exactly. And I was I was able to show I can not only be married to someone for 21 years, 21 years of this Congratulations. Company, um, but I also can still be the sexy girl that you like. Also, a really nurturing, nurturing mother. Mm-hmm. And- How beautiful is that, right? Because there's also the, always that thing, you know. You are a mother. You should not do that. What the heck? You know, yes, I don't really a understand that. A woman, even if she's a mom, why not? Yeah, I, I, you know, I tell Chanel along the way what I do. She knows I model. I try not to be like too extreme in her face. Yes, but she knows. She know dad, her dad is like a crazy, like, you know, body count performer, you know, rocker, this, that. I mean, he's, he's definitely extreme himself. So he, she's got two extreme parents and she's, it's normal to her. I understand. It, it's nothing big to her. And honestly, why do I got to now wear moo-moos um, around the house when I have a child? It's like, I go to the gym, I work hard on my body. So why can't I show that off? It's just, if you look at those bodybuilders, if you see a bodybuilder around and they're like, they, they work all time, all day at the gym, maybe morning and night. Yes. And they're not wearing big sweaters. They're showing off their big muscles. They're just like the biceps. That's equivalent to who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I try hard, you know, I keep myself in shape. I'm a very healthy woman. And I'm like, I'm not going to just like cover it up. You know, it's just when we're saying that doesn't mean that like you're saying all about you, it's, you know, I'm a mom. So why not? You know, I want to say to people, stop judging. But, you know, there's nothing bad. Stop judging. You know, everybody's hustle. And I'm also showing my my daughter that you could be confident. Absolutely. That's I'm showing her the confident way. I don't want to be that child where she's shy and she's, you know, curls up and doesn't want to show herself, you know, and she hides behind her hair or whatever. I'm showing her what confidence is all about. Not overconfidence, but just enough where, you know, you could still be a great person, loving person, but I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm boxing with the world sometimes. <laughs> I'm boxing with the world. I'm like, but I'm a good person. Yeah, I might show off like a little cleavage every now and then, but I'm a good person. Like I'm constantly fighting. <laughs> you know? Morning, actually, I was reading a quote that was saying that if someone speaks bad about you, it's usually or a man that cannot have you or a female that cannot beat you. So, oh, okay. Right? <laughs> you got it you you, see you already know you already know girl um, (laughs) i wanted to tell you like on you were um you were asking me i forget the question but uh about taking modeling seriously and i feel like i didn't i know the age exactly when i started taking it seriously and that was 27 years old i said to myself i was like i'm almost 30 and in my eyes 30 was like like old I was yeah. like, I'm 30. and if I'm not going to continue modeling I might as well do a calendar right and back then again calendars are huge they're huge there's cute there's a big um world of calendar um collectors That's and I calendar, remember that calendar collectors they still are they're calendar collectors I mean they, you can have calendar conventions but people will go and have it signed you know um yes. But I did my first calendar at 27. I think it was 2006, 2005, uh-huh. 2006. And it did so well that I bought my first house with that. Yay. So I, I was like, oh, you know, goodness. I turned into modeling into something. There is a okay. business. I really hate when people are all like model that, that you, that's what you do for your career. 
That's a freaking serious business. Well, I kind of bought a lot of stuff along the way and paid my bills Absolutely. and bought houses. I would I would consider that a career. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> so I was really um, fortunate for people to like what that what I gave and you know, like my visuals, because when you see a calendar of mine, it's it's I'm producing it. I produce it from wow. the end to the pictures, to the, uh, I mean, the layouts and to getting the photography together, getting my glam squad together. Like I produce the whole thing. So when you look at that calendar, it's no company that does it. It's all me with my physical hands and everything. Girl, I'm the same. I love to put all everything together. And, and that's it. actually, that's why I'm, um, you know, uh, on that note though, um, shoot, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? I got no. <laughs> a delay no. over here. Well, I, that's why I'm doing another calendar. Oh, awesome. After 10 plus years, I haven't touched the calendar, I don't know, mode for a long time. So I decided to do 40 fabulous 40s. Wow. Calendar. And, you know, just for those collectors, those big fans of mine that have been waiting for so long, I decided to do th- uh, 2022. So it's coming wow, out. The soon. time is now almost there. I know, I know, I know. I'm still working on it. I'm like, is, am I going to hit this deadline? I don't know. <laughs> like you were saying, I think that to sum it up, even to give, you know, a good advice to young girls, you know, really go out there and really, you know, treat your career, whatever it is, as you know, you are the, the boss of yourself, right? Especially if you want to be exactly. an entrepreneur, if you want to be in the entertainment business, you are an entrepreneur. This is something that I had to learn. I didn't know. And I figured out I'm a freaking entrepreneur. I have to put all, everything together. If you just wait for the agent to do it, right. the manager to do it, the, I know. they'll come, they help, but you have no. to figure it no out. One's, no one's knocking on your own door. Absolutely. You got to go knock on their door. Absolutely. Because everybody just thinks you could sit around now now, now social media oh I have you know 500 uh followers I'm a model now and they're gonna come to me no it, does, it doesn't even oh. happen to me they don't come to me like that and I've got a lot of followers so you have to be you have to be a and if you're in the modeling game you got to be a hustler absolutely you have to be a hustler because you got to go out and get and want it and be passionate about it if it's something that you really want to do you said you know I have a unique cheekbones I got a unique face I think I could do this well then go out and do it and do it don't, don't don't go and put an Instagram page and hoping someone's going to come to you because what's going to happen at the end of the day is they're not going to come and you're going to get depressed and you're like, I'm not good enough. Then you're going to start shaming yourself. And it's going to be like this whole circle in your head that yep. you're not worthy. And it has not social media has nothing to do with your world. Um, it may help you. It may help you sell stuff. But you physically got to go make the calls, get on the phone with agencies, talk them out and, you know, be courteous. Always. People do not like when you have attitude. Yeah. No one hates attitude. You never know. know. Maybe, you know, you're someone is a douchebag right now and you're like react and then you're going to find that person after a couple of years and that person can actually change your life. And, you know, it's better that that time, maybe that person made something wrong, but you still be courteous. You still, you know, because you never know. People might even come back and say, you know, that day I was really an asshole. I'm sorry. It did happen to me, you know, that people actually came back after say, you know, I recognize I've done that. So you really never, never know. So always be courteous. And if they're bad with you, you know, it's their own karma, whatever. Yeah, I and I and I believe that, um, like I said, if you're passionate about something, it will all come true. But really believe in yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I you have to be hard headed also because I also um, act, acted too. And you go for these parts, you go for these auditions and you go into a room full of women this that look exactly the same as you. A room full of women. Because if you're cast in a certain type, yeah. you're casted with the blonde hair, big boobs or whatever, you're going to be in the, you're auditioning for the same part. And if you don't get that part, oh, well, just go to the next one. Yeah. These people, they get so frustrated. They go part after part and part, and they don't feel like they're anything at the end of the day. Well, you're just up against the world. That's what's going on, you know? And when you do see actors, when you see the Tom Cruises and all that stuff, They've done a lot before. They were doing a lot of auditions. They were they a lot of auditions before. Yes. <laughs> you know, and they, yeah. they paid their dues. Yes. And, you know, that's, you know, they've been in the picture for a long period of time. But don't get frustrated. You can't just go to an audition and say, I didn't get it. I'm not good enough. 
I'm going to your gloves here. and go for it. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so exactly much. It. This was wonderful. You are amazing. I hope we can meet up in person uh, very soon. And I really thank you for this. And again, I have to come and see that closet. Yes, you're a welcome girl. Come here. Try some shoes on. But, we'll have uh, some wine on the couch. Please. Come <laughs> on, let's go, please. Yes. Okay. Thank Bye, everybody. Bye.